Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Martlesham Heath Aviation Society, the Control Tower Fun Day, which we have each year. Well, I'm quite privileged to stand up here this afternoon because I have with me uh, um, Wing Commander Ken Wallace. Probably what you don't know is that he actually was, he doubled for James Bond and actually flew little Nelly in the film You Only Live Twice. Thank you all very, very much indeed. Uh, I must say that in the sh fairly short time that I've known the Martinshire Peace Aviation Society, I've been amazed at what you've done. It's absolutely astonishing, and it's so good to see. Actually, I remember landing at Martinshire Heath, and I think it was 1941 in a Wellington bomber. <laughs> it's wonderful that so much memory is retained of those days and um, wartime days. Martinshire Heath, of course, was once the aeroplane and armament experimental establishment. Um, the James Bond story, of course, we never get, we never shake that off, but I hadn't actually seen a James Bond film before I flew in that one. And in 1966, a film company in I Italy, a film studio Roma, decided it was time to make a spaghetti James Bond film. And they made very good spaghetti westerns, but they decided they were going to make a spaghetti James Bond, and... Um, it was going to be shot in Brazil. Um, their hero, believe it or not, I've still got the poster on the wall, he's Agent 2.007. <laughs> 2007. And um, he has a super Vespa motor scooter that goes on the road, it's all streamlined, it goes on the water, underwater like a submarine, or you press a button and rotor blades fly out at the back and it flies. And so I was booked to go to Brazil, but the late Tony Scase, who used to do BBC interviews, heard me, uh, uh, heard of me going up there. He did an interview with me, and at the end of the interview, he said, "Would you like to have a fight with a helicopter with one of them, Ken?" And I remember the exact words. I said, "Give me half a chance." And that program went out the next morning when Ken Adam, the art director for Eon Productions, was talking. The next thing I knew, the phone was ringing by the late group captain Hamish Mahadi, who was the famous uh, Pathfinder chap. But he was then the aviation consultant to Eon Productions, the real James Bond filmmakers. Ken, you've got to bring one of your gyro things down to Pinewood Studios to do with the Bond movie. And I remember saying, look, I'm just about to go off to Brazil with my pet aircraft. I haven't got time to come down there. But he was more insistent than ever. And the only aircraft I'd got available was one that had been used for military trials. My cousin had pranked it. He said he landed it in a rabbit hole. I'm not quite sure what happened. But it was rebuilt. It was the only one that was available. I took that down to Pinewood Studios, and Hamish showed me a little square of concrete, about 12 feet square. He said, this is where you take off, Ken. I said, Hamish, it's not a helicopter. It doesn't go straight up. Oh, doesn't it? I didn't know that. And apparently, he looked around, we looked around at Pinewood Studios. I found a piece of pathway about 100 yards long, with all sorts of junk on either side. And at the far end was a great pile of railway sleepers, I subsequently learned were used to make the biggest set forever ever used for a film, the volcano at Pinewood Studio. And I said, it's the only place I could fly. Hamish said, right, Ken, we'll go and have lunch and meet Cubby Broccoli, the producer. And we all had a fair bit of red wine. In the afternoon, we went back to this place, and Hamish afterwards said it was the most dramatic shot ever. He said, you started the engine up, it made a terrible noise echoing around all the buildings, and then you let the brakes off and disappeared in the cloud of dust heading straight for the railway sleepers. But he said, when you came out of the cloud of dust going straight up in the blue sky, you were in the Bond movie. And I remember when I landed, Cubby Broccoli looked at me from a distance and said, yeah, same bill, that's okay, you'll do. And then uh, he said, and we shall want it in Japan in six weeks' time with the cosmetics on. That's of course the paint scheme and the rockets and weapons and so on. And so that's how it came about that... Uh, James Bond's aircraft was out in the film. Commander Wallace, very great pleasure to meet you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for coming today. It's been a, a fabulous day, lots of things to see yeah. and do. Uh, we heard of some of your exploits earlier with uh, Little Nelly on how it came yeah. about. Perhaps you could talk to us a bit more about Little Nelly and, and the actual construction of it. Yeah, exactly. Yes. What, what sort of engine? Uh, is it uh, it's specific? A it's a target plane engine converted. Yes. Normally it'd be full throttle all the time. I arrange it for the carburetor and so on. But a lot of modifications to it and still learning, as you might say. <laughs> I see. So uh, specifically built for, 
for uh, another purpose than just something you've adapted for this? this no, uh, it was one of three aircraft that were made to my design initially for military trials. I'd made the prototype and it was being used for military trials but it was in open frame form at the time. She was XR943 uh, but in open frame form during that very cold winter of 1962-63 and quite understandably, the Army Air Corps decided they wanted aircraft with a cabin. <laughs> so that was the end of it. But it was it then came back to me and was being used a bit. And my cousin had pranked it, actually. Uh, he said he landed it in a rabbit hole. I'm not quite sure what it was, but tipped it over. But it was rebuilt, and I was testing it. And so on when the James Bond thing cropped up. So uh, just sheer luck and being in the yeah, right place at yeah. the wrong time? My pet aircraft was on its way to Brazil for the, ja the uh, spaghetti James Bond film I was talking about. And so that's how it was that Ch little Nelly became the yeah. famous Good. aircraft. You're a quite hardy gentleman. I did see some video of you a while ago where you actually pranged it. Uh, yeah, for a heavy landing that's the right. The engine cut out just after takeoff when I turned downwind and there was just a rough ground ahead and she just did a number of somersaults, everything disappears and they expect a dead man and the suddenly silly old fool gets up and waves. <laughs> yeah, I, I did see the video, it's very Quite impressive. We know yeah, but they're, they're pretty good from a crash word in this point of view. Not, not, not a lot of protection, but uh, uh, built hardy enough. It's, it's a bit that matters keeps you protected pretty well, yeah. Mm. Perhaps you could just talk to us about the principles of how, how it works, because obviously the only driven propeller is the one on the back. That's right, yes. One on the top. In flight, the rotors are just gliding around like they're a pair of gliders on the end of a, a like joined by wingtip to wingtip, or a bit like a sycamore seed that whirls around as it comes down to the ground. But by having it whirling around like that and setting it at an angle and then pushing it along, it'll actually stay up. What's the sort of endurance of Nelly? Well, I haven't, uh, Nelly has not been used for endurance. The longest flight I've done so far is 7 hours 50 minutes non-stop. And in 1975 I took off at Lid on the south coast and I landed at Wick uh, in quite a headwind and so on, 6 hours 25 minutes later. Length of Britain non-stop, not bad. So uh, this is now just a permanent museum piece? No, no, she'd fly if there was a reason to fly her. Huh? She's not signed up for flight at the moment because, of course, it costs money for each one unless it's going to be used. I've got three I've got signed up at the moment, yes. and I've got 19 in all at home. Yes, so, it's worth, so it's worth a visit to your collection? Are they open to the public? Yes, yes uh, they're, they're by arrangement, yes. Uh, Commander Wallace, it's been a great pleasure, and thank you once again for coming. Thank you very, thank much. You very much.